Hello there LEGO fans, welcome to Brick TV. It's Chris here, back with another LEGO review. Today I'm looking at my favourite theme, Marvel Superheroes, and we've got the brand new Guardians of the Galaxy sets. Uh, this is from the second film, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. This is 76080, Aisha's Revenge. Um, this one is the mid-priced range in this theme. There are currently three sets in the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 uh, series. Uh, this is the mid-range one. It's priced in the United Kingdom at £29.99. That's uh, the same in dollars. And it's £34.99 in Euros. So what do we get? We've got uh, we got two vehicles, a little bit of scenery, and four figures. Um, we've got uh, Yondu. The first time we've got Yondu. We've got another Peter Quill Star-Lord. We've got Baby Groot, who is, of course, uh, unique to this film. Um, which a lot of people are very excited about. And we're finally on the end, we've got Aisha, who this set is named after. Now, I have seen the film, and I am going to keep this spoiler free. Uh, as hard as that's going to be for me. I loved the film. The film was absolutely amazing. And um, really, really enjoyed the heck out of it. If you haven't seen Guardians Volume 2 yet, please do. It's such good fun. Really, really fun film. And, uh, and this Lego set, really, I think... It's a classic example of of the fun that the film kind of encapsulates. It's bright, it's colourful, it's a terrific mixture of characters, and I think this was this was the set I was the most uh, looking forward to to building uh, out of the three. The the third uh, the the smaller one is uh, Ravager Attack, and the larger one is the Milano versus the um, Abelisk space creature, the pink the pink grimly creature. But uh, so this is. This one's basically, um, it's got a kind of a, a space mining ship uh, that Yondu's driving. It's got a little uh, sovereign drone here. And then we've got uh, Aisha's controlling. And then we've got, we've got Peter and we've got Groot. So I, this one is 323 parts, comes across three bags. Took me about 36 minutes to build, time myself on this one. Um, and I have to tell you, I really, really enjoyed this build. Usually, I I don't really, I've kind of, I've built so many Lego sets. It's not a boast, it's just a fact. I've built a lot of Lego sets doing these reviews. And um, and I think sometimes that the fun you can, can possibly wear away. I still love Lego, and I love the end product. But the thrill was maybe, it's sometimes missing from the building. But this set, I really enjoyed it. The construction of this mining pod, it's really good, really, some really clever building techniques gone into it. And I mean, as you can see, there's some fantastic, vibrant parts. As a parts pack, um, this is a really good one. There's such a fantastic um, range of parts in, in lots of different colors. Uh, I'm really strongly trying to kind of rein in my enthusiasm because um, I have I have enjoyed this. Um, so before I get carried away talking about how much I love it, let's talk about uh, let's talk about the bo the, the boring stuff. So the box is a good mid sized box. Um, it's long and thin, so it's not too big, not too small. It's just it's a good size. That's about the largest I think Lego boxes should be. They don't need to be bigger than that. Anything more than that is just a ton of dead space. So that's a good size box, and um, it gives you a good idea of what the sets. Uh, about with the, the scene that they've got and on the front we get two instruction books um, I always prefer one I, I, I don't I'd love to know the thinking behind Lego where they think oh, okay so this needs two and they're not going to be the same size why is why have we got one tiny baby one and then one that's slightly bigger I suppose actually it's the steps that go into the uh, there are three bags so three phases to this build yeah, so I've answered my own question. I've answered my own question. The reason this one is so small is because this bag, this is just really Aisha and the drone group and that little tiny bit of scenery. So there's so little in it, so of course it didn't need to be that big. Okay, um, still, I, I, I'm surprised they couldn't get all three stages into a book. Just add a few more pages to this. Um, but yeah, that's okay. The instructions didn't come mangled or anything. The box isn't big enough 
it's not it's not too large that the instructions can fall about and get uh, battered, which is a pet peeve of mine. I really really hate when it happens. Um, we've got because it's a superhero set, we've got a comic, and um, this is it's the same comic that's in all three Guardians sets. So there's nothing unique about it. But this is the best part of it, which shows you. Uh, the various minifigures across this theme. So we are looking at the middle one here. Uh, that's the small one, obviously that's the large one. So if you want the full Guardians lineup for volume two, you need to get all three sets. But there is actually no overlap. In fact, there is one tiny little, yeah, there's a little bit of overlap, sorry, in Star-Lord. Um, this, in this one here, he's not got no helmet. Um, that's a different, he's wearing a different um, outfit. He's got silver armor on and he's got a helmet in the large set. And there are two groups, but they are different, and I will I will talk about why. Right, okay, so instructions, yep, good. Comic book, fine. Uh, we've got stickers. So we've got uh, six stickers, which is not too many, but average for a set this size. But I actually enjoyed applying the stickers this time, which is not something I usually say. I hate stickers as a rule, and I always prefer printed parts. This set's got some amazing printed parts, which I will come to. But four out of those six stickers were actually a genuine pleasure to apply. And I will tell you why in a second. Um, so, I'm going to talk about the build first before I talk about the minifigures. So let's get... Let's... So we'll start with the smallest bit. So we've got a little bit of scenery, which is just... I don't know. I don't know if it's there for the play feature. It's absolutely pointless. Um, this little... Thing here is in is in Groot's hand on the box. I'm just gonna I'm gonna pull the box out of the way. So you can see uh, it's here on the front. Um, in the instructions, it tells you to um, hold it in Groot's hand. Oh, I can see it goes in the hold. So I think this is representing uh, the battery, which um, a, a little battery, which may sound silly, but in the film it it plays a pivotal role. Uh, so I, th I think that's what it's it's there for. Uh, so Groot, Groot can hold it or it can go in the hold of the, uh, of the little mining ship. So there it is, so that's the battery. It's made up of two elements, I'm not gonna talk about it again, it's kind of pointless. Uh, so we've got this tiny bit of red scenery made, out, made up of uh, regular red and dark red in lots of different types, lots of different elements. And we've got a small play feature here where if you push this down uh, the scenery explodes okay fine thanks for that Lego I suppose uh, what's the ages on the box the box is 7 to 14 so you know I suppose they've got to throw play features in haven't they for the younger ones next we've got the sovereign drone uh, the sovereign uh, is a race uh, Aisha is the high priestess um, in this set, she is the antagonist, which is made clear um, on the box. That's not me giving you a spoiler of this. In this set, she's an antagonist. And this is a drone. This isn't a manned ship. The Sovereign used manned drones instead of piloted ones. She, uh, Aisha's got a little control, a little remote control that she uses to control it. Now, this is a small, simple, but very visually appealing and fun to build and has some lovely little parts in it. So I hinted earlier on, I thought the parts in the set were very good across a range of colours and and we're beginning to see them here. Um, I mean, I'm very, very excited about these brand new 2x2 two two curved tile macaroni pieces. They're gorgeous. This is the first time I've, I've had any and to get them in pearl gold is kind of like not winning the parts jackpot, but it, it's a lovely treat. I mean, pearl gold's a rare colour anyway, so to get these brand new curved tile elements in that colour is lovely. Uh, we've got dual stud shooters. I've doubled up on the studs because you get spares. Uh, so they're, they're positionable. Um, uh, that's, that's a lovely gold uh, radar dish element there on the front. Uh, we've got pearl gold here. We've got, uh, is that azure? It's medium azure. We've got trans purple, and then we've got trans blue. Now I've never seen these elements here put at uh, 90, uh, 45 degree angles. 
or 90 degree angles even. So they just push up next to each other at a right angle and they make a really nice curve. Now I've never personally seen that done. In fact, if I just pop this panel off, uh, that'd make a really nice circle. So, uh, yeah, these just go on. So it's just made up of lots of nice parts. Uh, this medium, God, what is this medium dark flesh? I think. Says he's not sure. No, it's not. Um, Nougat. I don't know. I can't remember what the brilliant name is for this, but it's clay face color, uh, and that's quite a rare color as well. Just, I'm going to stop babbling about uh, colors and parts, but just th this a little tiny drone. Uh, nice, positionable veins here. Um, it's just made up of really, really nice parts in lots of different nice colors, and it's kind of swooshable. It's lovely. It's a shame you don't get you don't get more of them. Uh, so there you go, a little tiny unmanned attack drone. But the main event is is this. So this is a Ravager, um, I guess mining vehicle is probably the best description for it. Um, it plays a role in the film towards the end. Um, I'm not going to speak about how good a representation of it. Actually, I can't, honestly can't remember, but it's a, I mean, it looks like a submersible. If like something from the kind of Lego City Ocean sets, but it's a so it's kind of got the repulsive kind of anti gravity thing going on, and it's predominantly made up of two colors, so regular yellow and this very rare color, which has two different names. So I call it bright light orange, but you might call it flame yellowish orange. One is the Lego name, and the other is the Bricklink kind of A4 name, you know, what mockers use. As I enrage, as I enrage people who, who use the Lego name and are also kind of A4 mockers, but that's just the way I am. Sorry, I, I prefer Bricklink colour names. Um, so yeah, this is a rare colour and you get a lot of parts in it. Uh, I haven't seen this much bright light orange uh, since Wally, -E, the set. Um, so it's, it's lovely to get lots of nice curved pieces. This great big element here, uh, these are printed. So it's just a good, and then you've got all this nice yellow, uh, there's some red on the inside of it. So it's a, it's a kind of a compact looking submersible, but it's it's just, yeah, it's, it was really good fun to build, really good design. Um, it's got a significant stud shooter, which I'm not even gonna fire off because it's gonna knock my background over, it's still power. So you've got to, you get a spare one of them. Uh, here's, so in terms of the six stickers, there's one on each side, which and they're nice and simple to put on. And then the other four are used on here as, as essentially battle damage. And the lovely thing about it is there's no pressure on you to put them all in a certain way. The instructions are very, you know, free. With this. They're just like, put it roughly here. You don't have to worry about getting them straight um, or lined up. They're designed to look haphazard and random. And, and as such, I, I enjoy just sticking them on and not having to worry about play, placement. Like on this, you've got to really get it lined up and it's so make sure it's it's square and, and parallel. So it's lovely to just bang four stickers on really quick and not have to care about whether they're straight. Uh, as I've said, so these these big 8x8 uh, radar dish kind of element, it's all printed, which I'm really glad about. That would have been a hellish sticker to apply. Um, I've got no idea what other uses you could have for this but it's got it's got lovely printing with a Ravager logo on um what else have we got to talk about so uh, I suppose the internal cockpit so the mini the minifigure driver goes in here and to get it out you just grab uh, this element and pull it back which exposes uh, the cockpit the driving seat so you can just push someone in there sit them down and then push it closed then it, it clips with a satisfying technic connection and your minifigure is encapsulated ensconced I will say inside here um, it's yeah it's got a bit of resistance to it it's, it's a great it's not going to come it's not going to come loose it's got a really nice chunky connection You've got to really give it some uh, welly to get that open but it slides really nicely um, 
and it, it just went together really well. I was very impressed with this vehicle in general. It was fun to build, used really inventive techniques of putting it together. Lots of snot, which is studs not on top, so tons of um, plates going you know, sideways on instead of everything just being built in one direction. And it just made it an interesting and fun build. I really liked it, and I think the final vehicle looks terrific. I keep adjusting these uh, these repulsor kind of grab lift things, but I just um, yeah I love it. Really good parts. I uh, just really really nice parts. Uh, these can you see this? Uh, these two kind of they're, they're like boat elements. Um, they're kind of the bottom of boats or the bo bottom of choppers or planes. This is the first time this has been available in regular yellow because mostly it's been city, so the greys and stuff. So just tons of really good parts. I honestly, I'm genuinely very, very impressed. And it was good to build. So, so far, these have been great. I mean, that's pointless, but it's just nice parts. Uh, okay, and then on to, so usually the minifigures are the main event for me, but I've enjoyed the heck out of putting these together. And I'm really happy with the elements that I'm going to get back out of them when I dismantle them. I don't really display my retail sets as a rule. So they're not vehicles anyway. I kind of displayed some of the top end, like the modulars and stuff like that. But uh, I haven't got room to display everything. So so these guys will be broken down and, and used for some of my own creations. So just take a breath and then we'll talk about the minifigures, which are even better than the vehicles, I think. So from the left, I mean, I've already run through these, but we've got Yondu, we've got Star-Lord, We've got Groot and we've got Aisha. So Yondu, first time we've got this guy. We didn't get him from the last film. Uh, we've had two Star Lords before and we've got two new ones in this theme. We've got baby Groot in his Ravager costume. And then we've got the High Priestess Aisha, who's the golden lady. Now, okay, we'll start with Yondu, who's Brilliant. He's just brilliant. Uh, he's the best minifigure in the set. And I'm, I'm leaning towards saying he's the, he's the best minifigure in the whole Marvel superheroes range. I think they've just, they've nailed him. It's just got, it's got fantastic printing on the head. The expression's wonderful. His new fin is, is really nice. This is a brand new element in trans red. It looks terrific. He's even got his little um, arrow weapon that he uses um the, the ravager costume is is wonderful it's all this is completely brand new everything apart from the arrow is absolutely brand new first time so terrific printing on the legs and torso all first time prints um and look how well the his long red ravager duster looks when it goes all the way down onto his legs they've lined up really nicely in terms of the back yeah we've got rear torso printing Nothing on the back of the head. It's all it's all located on the front. Uh, but I think that's ter terrific. I really, really, really like this one. Very happy that we finally got a Yondu minifigure in it. It's a good one. Uh, okay, on to Star Lord or Peter Quill. Um, what can I say about this guy? So this is the version with a jetpack. So you can see he's got the neck, he's got the neck brace on, and we've got a jetpack on the back, which is just basically a one by one black plate with a little pair of binoculars attached to it. He's got his trademark uh, dual pistols. Um, and it's good, yes. It's another good, solid Star Lord minifigure. Plain black legs, torso is unique. Um, the head, is, this is what I refer to as the uh, Chris Pratt head. It's, it's double sided, but they've used this in every Chris Pratt minifigure, uh, apart from Emmett from the Lego movie. But so uh, every. Jurassic World set that had him in was this head, um, the two original Star Lords from the first Guardians of the Galaxy sets, and the two from this this wave. Uh, it was also the head of the Winter Soldier in the recent Marvel uh, superheroes wave. So lots of use. So yeah, it's the Chris Pratt head though. They just keep reusing it, so it's absolutely fine. It's got a uh, dual expression. This time the hair's different um, on the. On the two Lego sets from the um, the first film, the old ones, it was a 
a, a more generic mold, uh, kind of a plain headpiece. So this time he's got this excellent wavy one. This is not unique to this minifigure. It was, I think it was first done in the third, in the German football, the CMF range. Uh, it's been used a few more times since then. But it looks, it looks better. It fits better. So yeah, overall, this is a, a really good Star Lord. Um, yeah, I don't think there's anything else to say about that. On to Groot. So, Baby Groot is, uh, for some people, the star of the movie. Uh, so previously we had the giant brick-built uh, brick Groot. Now we've got Baby Groot. This is one of two variants. There is uh, there is another one in the larger set of the theme, the Milano vs. Abelisk uh, set, 76081. It's the same mould. Um, this uh, this one's in a Ravager costume, the other one isn't. He's just uh, essentially just naked. Um, you can, if that even applies to Groot, he's, he's not wearing a, an outfit. Uh, so I've just put him on two trans clay studs just to try and get him up. So just to try and you know get him a bit higher so we can see him. Uh, yeah, it's really it's it's for such a small minifigure. Uh, they've done a really good job with the sculpting. So his kind of hands are, are rounded so you can clip things onto them. Uh, and he's got a recessed stud at the, um, a space for a stud anyway, at his underside so you can, you can attach him to anything easily. Uh, the, yeah, the red goes onto the back. So it's, yeah, it's nice and simple and small and very easy to lose. But it's got, look at the really fine printing on his face. I think the only thing, actually, I was going to say the only thing that's a bit of a disappointment is, is his, his expression kind of looks sad. But um, without sp sp spoiling it for you, in the film, when he's in a Ravager costume, he doesn't seem happy. So that fits. Um, so yeah, it's a lovely little lovely little minifigure. And you can, you can put him in a uh, minifigure's hand as well. You could, Star Lord can hold him. Thanks to that uh, space for the stud underneath underneath them. So yeah, it was wicked. So this is one of two baby groups. So this one's wearing an outfit and the one in the larger set isn't. So you choose which one you prefer. Okay, finally, we've got the High Priestess Aisha. Um, everything about this lady is is unique um, in terms of the, the coloring and the printing. So the torso and the legs are, are unique in this. So they've got dark blue with this lovely gold highlighting. Uh, it's really nice printing, that's, that's brand new, never been done before. That goes onto the back as well. Uh, the head is in pearl gold and is this is the first time that's been done. If I just try and remove a hairpiece. Uh, so that's a, just kind of, a, they're a, an arrogant people um, and that's pretty much her resting face. So it's, it's a very good representation. Um, and then we've got the angry side of her personality represented here. Again, very nice and, and accurate as well, should I point out. This is not a unique hairpiece. This, is, this has been done a lot. Uh, this is a very, very common female hairpiece, but this is the first time it's been done in, in pearl gold. Making everything about Aisha unique. Um, what I will say about a costume, though, I don't remember her wearing that. Um, unless it was towards the back end of the film. I'm not going to, I don't want to say anything more because of spoilers. Um, I don't think she wore that when we meet her first or when we see her in the middle of the film. Um, I'd have to go back and see the film again actually to um, to be 100% sure if, that, if the, what she's wearing is in any way screen accurate. Uh, yeah, so I d yeah I don't know. Let go. Um, I really I can't I can't say on this one at this point. I'd have to see the film again to to see her in a final costume to know if this is any way accurate. As it is, it's nice. It's just like a, a blue spacesuit really, um, and it would it would go on anyone any kind of space character. You could just pop a different head on that and it would look good. So yeah, she's fine. She's fine, but not. I don't think. Even if she is wearing that in the, the scene of the film I'm thinking of, it's not her iconic costume. Everyone else is wearing their iconic costumes, and this is not 
uh, what we see her in, and I can't think why. I don't think it was particularly revealing. Um, so it's a bit of a shame, but um, uh, the, the gold is great on a, a head and a hair. It's really nice. And that is everything. So, 76080, Aisha's Revenge. I absolutely loved it. I really genuinely loved this set. I thought it was terrific. I think for £30, you get a really, really good vehicle, a good build, a good fun build using some interesting techniques, uh, some wonderful minifigures, Baby Groot, Yondu, fantastic, Peter Quill. Okay, that's, you know, it's not unique, but you need you need a Star Lord. And uh, an Asia, this is currently the only way to get her. Um, but I, honestly, I'd say it's almost worth it just for Yondu. I think he's so good. Baby Groot thrown in for good measure. I don't have anything uh, really bad to say about this except maybe Aisha's costume. I, I thought it was great. Really enjoyed building it. Uh, I, I love looking at it. I think the gold and the yellows just work astonishingly well. I think this is a really good set. And and I, I'm not convinced 7608 won um, Milano versus the Obelisk will, will be able to top this for me. But that's the next one I'm building, and then I'll do a review of it. So you'll be able to find out when when you watch that review. So this is great. I genuinely really recommend this one. I've, I've enjoyed building it, and I think the results are fantastic. Great parts, great minifigures, great vehicles. Just ticking all three boxes. Yeah, don't have anything. And I think the price is good. I don't think it's overpriced for what it is. And uh, and you'll get, yeah, a good solid 30, 40 minutes, maybe maybe more for the younger builders, maybe up to an hour of build time. So yeah, I really I recommend it. I think it's terrific. Right, um, I hope you found this enjoyable. If you have, please uh, give us a little like, click the old thumbs up, and uh, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of our videos. And if you have enjoyed it, please uh, please share it with it as anyone who you think would enjoy it. Okay, thank you for sitting with me through this one. I'll be back with more Marvel superheroes reviews. So in the meantime, happy building and I'll be back soon.